All right, hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. In this module, we're going to be looking at the table heat map. Now, the table heat map is an interesting visual. It does allow you to take what looks like a table. It's almost like a matrix or a pivot table and represent, instead of values in the middle, actually have colors that are representative of the values that are inside your data set. And so you'll see that it uh, allows you here to actually change the colors that are used. There's a property in here called Color Brewer which actually allows you to modify and adjust the colors that are, you can use. There's a ton of different choices you can select there. Uh, you also have an ability to increase the number of buckets or the variety of colors that are being used as well. So in this case, in the screenshot you see here on the right-hand side, there are six different buckets that are being used, and you can tell that from the little legend on the bottom. You can increase or decrease that number inside the properties. All right, now you can see who this one was developed by. Let's go ahead and take a look at where you can go to download this one and how you can actually use it inside of Power BI. All right, so you're going to want to go to the Visuals Gallery, the Custom Visuals Gallery, which you can find by going to visuals.powerbi.com. That will redirect you to where I am at right now. And as you slide down in the Visuals Gallery, you will find there is the table heat map right here. And if you select the table heat map, you can go ahead and download that, and you can download some samples here as well. Now, once you download the custom visual, you'll go back over to Power BI where you will start to use it. So you can see I'm going to go flip back over to Power BI here. And we're going to walk you through a demonstration on how to use this. This demo, we're actually going to walk through two different ways that you can use the table heat map, just to show you a different variety of ways that you can work with it. Uh, one having a limited amount of measures, and then one we're going to have several different measures that we add into it. All right, so let's go ahead and start by going to get our data. You'll do that, of course, by going up to the get data section, and we are going to be using an Excel file as our source. It's an easy way to pull in some data here. So I'll select Excel. And the file that we're going to be using, you can find the download link below in the video, but we're also going to be using my class files here, uh, which you can find is the monthly sales file. That's the one we're going to be using here called monthly sales. I'll select monthly sales and hit open. And once I do that, I'll go ahead and select off the sales totals here and hit load to bring that into my data model. Now with the first sample that we're going to do, I'm going to create a few other visuals first before we jump straight into the table heat map. I'm going to go ahead and start by first starting off with a slicer. So I'm going to select the calendar year and drop that in here. You'll notice it initially brings it in here as a column chart. Uh, but what I'd like to do instead is see this as a slicer. So I'll flip this to a slicer here. And you can see it shows a distinct list of years that I can use as a filter now. I'll likely want to increase the text size of that. So I'll go under the format section here and bump up the text size, which you'll find underneath the item section here. So I'll bump that up a little bit so we can see it. And I'll move that over here so it's tucked away. And that way we can use this to filter. And tell you what, let's go ahead and filter this to a particular year. Let's filter this to 2015. And that way we can kind of look at one year and then we can slice back and forth between different years in just a moment. All right, the next thing I'd like you to do is to create a table. So I'm going to select off of the slicer for a moment, click somewhere in the background. And I'm going to go ahead and start to bring in some data from my field list. We'll start by bringing in the month field. You'll see this places it inside of a table here initially. And I'd also like to add to that table the profit value that I have and the prior year profit. Now, again, the text size is a little small. I may want to increase that a bit by going to the format section. And underneath the general section here, I can bump up the table size, the table text size a bit. There we go. You may also want to do some formatting on the values. You can see that profit is coming through as a number and not as a currency. And so is prior year profit. The sort order of the months here is appearing and showing the months in alphabetical order instead of chronological order. And so that's one of the things we we'll want to fix here as well. So a couple fixes, some format fixes, and also a sort order fix. So let's take care of those next. To fix the sort order of the month, you're going to go to the month field inside the field list. So you'll select month over here. And once you select month, you'll go up to the modeling ribbon on the very top of the Power BI desktop. Once you select modeling, you'll then go to the a section here called sort by column and you're going to change the sort by column to sort by instead of the month name to sort by the month number which you have right here the one here called calendar month number you'll notice that it'll resort everything by the month number instead of the month name which looks like it's doing a better job here now you may also want to adjust the formatting here if you're looking at things in a table you probably want to see this as a currency so i can i can change the format here to the prior year profit as well as the profit to a currency us in this case and that might make it a little nicer to be able to view here in the table. Now we're putting this in a table, but really what our end goal is, is we're going to place this into a table heat map. So what I'd like you to do is go ahead and make a copy of this table. So I'm going to control C to copy and control V to paste it again. And I'm going to put the regular table over here 
somewhere in the bottom. And then what I'd like to do is with the first table, I'm going to convert this first table into a table heat map. Now to change a table to another visual, I would come over to the visualizations pane here, and I would select a visual that I want to change it to. Now, unfortunately, we haven't actually brought in the table heat map yet. It is a custom visual, so we do need to import it. And we can do that by selecting the import from file option here. I'll choose import. And then I'll go find inside of my custom visuals that we downloaded earlier, where I showed you how to download earlier. I'll find the table heat map and go ahead and select that and import it. Now I've imported the table heat map. It now shows up in my custom visuals, or really my visuals pane, just like any other visual. And I can select the table that I want to convert from a table to a heat map, table heat map, and then click on the new table heat map option here. When I do that, and make this a little larger so we can actually see it, when I do that, you can see that it's automatically converted it into a table heat map for me. Remember, right now we're looking at 2015 data. You do have little tool tips that you can hover above here. So if I hover above June of 2015's profit, I'm seeing uh, 2.4 million. I should see June profit 2.4 million here. So the numbers do match up to the table that we have here. That's why I wanted to include the table. So we can do a little bit of validation and prove that that value is what we see in the table and in the data set. So now we can kind of flip back and forth between different years, 2014, you can see the values, 2013, you can see the values, there was no prior year, so the prior year profit's not here. 2016 was a partial year, so you can see it only takes up a couple of the months here uh, in our data set. And that matches up to what we have inside the table on the bottom, so everything looks appropriate here. Now that's the table heat map and a basic example. What I'd like to do now is show you how you can actually take it a step further, and we're going to create another data set based off the same exact table we already have, but show you how you could also do this if you had more measures than what we have here in this demonstration. So to do this, if you're following along, you're going to go to the Home tab, and we're going to go up to the Edit Queries option in the Home tab. So go ahead and select Edit Queries. Now what I'd like you to do is we're going to make a copy of the data set that we're working on right now, and we're going to make some adjustments to it. So I'm going to uh, right-click on the Sales Totals inside the Query Editor, and I'll select Duplicate, or Duplicate, and it's going to make a second copy of this. You can rename it if you want, but for the time being, it doesn't really matter what the name of it is. So I'm going to leave the name as that, and then I'm going to go ahead and start by making some changes to the data set that we have here. Now, one of the things I'd like to do to this data set is, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and remove the prior year profit. For this, this new demonstration, it's less useful. So I'm going to right-click on prior year profit and remove it. Now, the other thing I'd like to do here is to actually, uh, I want to pivot, not unpivot, I want to pivot some of the data that I have inside of this data set. Because what I'd like to see, and to be able to show you, is if instead of having a column that had the years, and I see every one of the years inside of a column, let's say instead I had a column for each year. So I had a column for 2013, 14, 15, 16, that showed the profit. Now, if I wanted to do something like that, you would use a pivot transform. To take these rows and make them columns, I need to use a pivot transform. So you start by selecting the calendar year column. Then I would go up to the transform uh, ribbon up at the very top and select that I wanted to perform a pivot column transform up at the very top here of the ribbon. So I'll select pivot column. It'll ask me which measure or which value do I want to pivot on top of. In this case, I want to pivot on top of the profit column. Okay, So you'll select profit here. And then when you hit OK, you'll notice the reduction in rows that I have, because what it's going to do, if you look in the Advanced Editor, is it's going to sum up all the values that I have for profit into these new year columns that I'm creating. That's the default behavior is to sum. So if I hit OK, you'll notice that I have a huge reduction in the number of columns that I'm seeing here. But I'm also seeing the months and a column for each of the profits on a year level. And so what we're going to do inside this next example is actually take those year columns and bring them into the table heat map. So I'm going to go back up to the home ribbon here inside of the query editor and hit close and apply to bring in this new data set. And so you'll see in the field list on the right hand side, I now have two data sets, one called sales totals, one called sales totals two, that's fine. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit the plus sign down at the bottom to create a brand new report page. So you'll hit the plus sign on the bottom here. It gives us a new blank for design surface, and what we're going to do is we're going to use this new data set in this second report page. So for this one, what I'm going to have you do is go into the sales totals 2, and we're going to select off the columns month, and also 2013, 2014, 2015, and 2016. Now there's a few changes that we'll need to make to this data set that I want to point out to you here first before we go too far couple of changes that we'd like to make is first of all we're going to need to increase the text size of this table so we can actually see it so let's do that first there we go 
So a couple of things we'll want to do is first, we want to change the aggregation type of this data set. Let me show you what I mean. When you go back to the field, field well here, you can see that it doesn't look like it's actually aggregating any of the values. It's just kind of placing them and visualizing them on the table here. And so what I'd like to do is I want to change it so that those year columns actually aggregate. The, again, the reason why I know that they're not aggregating is you don't see any like a sigma symbol next to it. It's just purely displaying the value, the number value that was inside of the table. You'll also notice that here the month columns need to be resorted again. And again, this is a new data set, so the same problem we had in the first data set reappears because we've basically made a new data set and uh, we didn't apply the modeling features yet. So we need to do that here. So let's go ahead and first deal with the sort order. Remember how we did that? We select the month column, go up to the modeling ribbon, and we're going to change the sort by column to sort by instead of the month name to sort by the month number, which you see right here. Okay, and that should fix the sort order for us. That looks a little better. The other thing that we want to fix, again, is the aggregation of our fields here. So 2013, 2014, 2015, we want those to be aggregated or summed. And so to change that behavior here, you'll select 2013 and go up to where it says default summarization right here. Right now it's set to do not summarize. You're going to flip that from do not summarize to sum. And when you do that, you'll notice how it appears in the field list. Now it has a little sigma symbol next to it, indicating that it is going to summarize whenever it's used. So we want to do that same thing for each of these fields, the 2015, 2016 as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove those out for a moment, and I'm going to add them back in now that we've changed the summarization type here. All right, good deal. So we've got those fields added in. Now that we've added them in, we can go ahead and start to make this into a table heat map. So we can select table heat map here. And you can see, indeed, it does show us each of the years. So you can see 2013, 14, 15, 16, all within the table heat map. By the way, you can take this and make it into the focus mode, and that way it's a little easier to read. So you can see the months going across the top, the years going across as the vertical axes here. And so what we're going to do, though, is I want to show you some of the other format changes you can make here. And primarily, the format changes have to deal with the number of buckets that you use. Here's the buckets. Um, right now, I'm by default using five buckets of different colors. And then I'll also show you how you can change the theme or the colors that are being used inside of the table heat map. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and make sure we have the table heat map selected and then go over to the format paintbrush. And then inside the format paintbrush, there's not a whole lot here that's very specific to the table heat map. Uh, you can, of course, adjust the title if you don't want it to be called 2013, 14, 15, 16 by months. You could change this to something just like uh, sales by month if you'd like. And then you could, of course, center that and increase the size. So you can adjust this, the title. That, that sort of stuff exists in every one of the visualizations. You can add a background color if you want. You can lock the aspect ratio. You have a lot of things you can play around with. But there is some things that are very specific to the table heat map that are underneath the general tab. So are the general settings here. So if you go to the general settings, the general settings include the position and the size of the table heat map, but it also includes on the bottom some different options here called Color Brewer. Let me increase this so you can read that. And also another property here called Buckets. So Buckets has to do with the number of different colors that are used in the table heat map. So if I change that from 5 to, say, 6, you'll notice it adds another bucket to the different colors that are being used. And then also, uh, average, or, or, it also distributes those values across inside the table heat map. I'm going to bump that up to 7 just so you can see a variety of different colors here. And then what I'd like to do is actually change and show you the different color brewer options that are available to you. Now, there are a ton of different options. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up another report page and actually show you all the options. But before I do that, let me highlight a couple of them here. Uh, I have a couple of these here that I'm just going to copy and paste in to show you some of the different options. This one's a yellow, green, blue hue so you can see kind of a yellow green blue hue to this one that's one i put paste in here it's y-l-g-n-g-b-u uh, there's also one that has a yellow orange red hue here to it so if i paste this one in here you can see that one has kind of more of a yellow orange red feel to it i have also this one that's a red yellow blue one i like a bit if i paste this one in here you'll be able to see that it has a nice color palette to it and you can see here that the lower numbers are indicated by red the higher numbers are indicated by blue there's also ones that you can type in that are just more plain, like I could type in greens here if I want. If I type in greens, that works here. You can see it all has green values to it, or you can type blues or purples. All those kind of things work in here so that you're able to see different in, uh, colors represented here. Now, if you type in something that doesn't actually make sense, like I didn't spell purple right here, then it'll go back to the default of red. But if I type in purples correctly, it'll bring that back as you see here.
A couple other ones are, I'll highlight here. You have uh, Spectral. So if I use Spectral here, this one's kind of a nice one. I actually like that one. It has a green, uh, red to orange to yellow to green to blue. Uh, you have one here called Paired, which is an interesting one as well. Let me bring that one in. If you select Paired, this one has kind of an interesting one where it looks like the higher the values is actually a bad thing. Uh, so that could be used for something like uh, if you're going over budget, you don't want to go too, you don't want to go over budget. Being over budget is a bad thing. So this could indicate a too high of a number. Also medic, medical stuff, if your blood pressure is way too high, that kind of thing would be interesting to view here. Uh, you also have things like, uh, there's this one here called Pastel 1. So if I bring in a Pastel, it's actually Pastel 1, you can see it puts it in more Pastel colors. So there's a big variety of different colors you can choose from. I kind of like this one that we looked at a moment ago. Let me bring this one back in called Spectral. I like that one. I'll leave that one as the what I leave in here for my final one. All right, so I'm going to leave it as this one. I think that one looked pretty good. And what I'd like to do to end here in this video is actually show you some of the different colors that you can choose if you wanted to. And there's a lot of different ones you can choose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another report page here on my design surface, on my report design surface. And I'm going to create a little text box, paste in all these values I have in my clipboard here. I'll increase the text size a bit so you can actually see this, but I want to show you towards the end here all of the different types of color settings that you could place inside of that option that we were looking at just a moment ago. So you can see there's quite a few different ones to choose from. I've listed them out here. Uh, gives you a good indication on what's available. Again, the ones you can type in here that are just colors, you can type in purples, blues, uh, greens, oranges, red, reds, and grays in here as well. So there's a lot of different options that you have available to you here. The table heat map is a pretty nice visual. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I look forward to showing you our next custom visual and our next module.